Hello, good morning, friends. So, welcome back to this class. And I hope you remember what is our topic. We are talking about mineral and energy considerations. In the part of mineral, we have already finished. Today, we shall speak about conven conventional sources of energy. We saw what was the non conventional forms of energy. Now we shall see what is called conventional sources of energy. What are the conventional sources? In the other class we learned what is the difference between conventional source and non-conventional source. So let us see what are the conventional source. So what is uh, people use uh, normally firewood all these things are conventional sources of energy. So first thing is Coal. The first conventional source of energy is coal. I hope you know what is coal. No? Coal. So, in India, coal is the most abundantly available fossil fuel. We can underline. What is the most abundantly available fossil fuel in India? That is coal. And it provides a substantial part of the nation's energy needs. So, this coal is able to meet a substantial part, that is, a great part of our energy is met by coal. And it is used for power generation to supply energy to industry as well as for domestic needs. So, you can underline that also. What are the usefulness of coal? It is meant for power generation, supply energy to industry and also for domestic needs. India is highly dependent on coal for meeting its commercial energy requirements. So because of this coal deposits are good in India or rich in India, we can heavily depend on this. If this coal is not there, most of our energy needs will not be met. So this call is a great blessing for us. And as you are already aware that coal is formed due to compression of plant material over millions of years. So how this coal is formed under the earth? It is because of the compression of the plants that happen to be under the earth for millions of years. So due to natural calamity or other occurrences lot of trees and other animals and all fell into the tree mostly it is trees and the trees uh, fell down then the soil fell on top of that and these trees went buried under the mud and it remained there compressed for millions of years not one or two years if you cut and put one tree under the mud and uh, if you dig out after one year it may get rotten it may not be there so for millions of years it remained compressed Press under the earth very deep in the soil and then because of that heat and everything and after millions of years it is turned into coal that is how we have coal deposit on the under the earth then coal is therefore is found in a variety of forms depending on the degree of compression and the depth and the time of burial so everywhere we don't find the same type of coal the coal is varied in its quality, in its shape and so on. So what are the reason? It is found in variety of forms depending on the decrease of compression. So how strong was the compression? The pressure was how strong under the earth? Then how deep it was buried? Then how long it has taken? So these are the three factors that is affecting the quality of the coal. What are they? First of all, the degree of compression. Then second one is the depth of its burial. Then third one is the length of its period. How long it was buried underneath. So, depending on these three, three factors, the quality of the coal is also different. Decaying plants in swamps produce peat and which has a low carbon and high moisture contents and low heating capacity. So the, swamp, the plants that are growing in swamps, the marshy areas, the wet areas, 
and they are buried under the soil due to some natural occurrences and it has a low carbon and high moisture content and low heating capacity so the coal that is formed from this marshy land or wetland or swamps what happens it has got very low carbon then it has got high moisture and it has content in low heating capacity so coal that are found from these regions it has got this kind of characteristic what are they it has got low carbon low heating capacity and very high moisture and lignite is a low grade brown coal so this type of coal that it has got very low carbon high moisture and low temperature low heating capacity that type is called lignite you can underline lignite the name of that type of coal is called lignite and it is gray low grade and the color is brown then which is soft with a high moisture content so it is soft and therefore it is also containing lot of moisture so if it is containing lot of moisture you know it will not be able to burn well so because of this content of moisture there that's why it is a very low quality then the principal lignite reserves are in neyveli in tamil nadu and are used for generation of electricity so this type of lignite or this type of coal called lignite and the main source is found in a place called neyveli in the state of tamil nadu and it is mainly used for generation of electricity coal that has been buried deep and subjected to increased temperatures is bituminous coal and another type of coal another quality which is a little more better and this that is called bituminous and what are these qualities so coal that has been buried deep so this coal called bituminous it has been buried very deep under the earth and it has been subjected to increased temperatures so the deeper we go into the earth the temperature increases and therefore it has been very uh, highly in the temperature area the temperature was highly increased in that area and it is the most popular coal in commercial use so this bituminous coal which is buried very deep under the earth and therefore in very high temperature area it is very much useful for what purpose in the commercial use it is very much required then metallurgical coal is high grade bituminous coal and which has a special value for smelting iron in blast furnaces so another type of coal is called metallurgical coal third type of coal is metallurgical coal and it is very high it has got very uh, high value especially for smelting iron ore it is used in the iron blast furnaces we learned early how the iron is separated from iron ore so it needs to be heated up in a very high temperature that is more than 300 celsius centigrade it has to be heated up and for that it needs a lot of energy source so this coal called metallurgical coal is mainly used for this purpose to heat the iron to melt the iron then another type of coal is bituminous coal the metallurgical coal is high grade bituminous coal which has a special value for smelting iron in blast furnaces and another type is anthracite anthracite coal anthracite is the highest quality hard coal you can underline so among we learned about four types of coals and the fourth one is the highest grade that is called anthracite anthracite is the highest quality hard coal it is very hard in type and it is the quality is very high then in india coal occurs in rock series of two main geological ages namely gondwana a little over 200 million years in age and 
in tertiary deposits which are only about 55 million years old. So in India we can find two types of coal deposits. One is 200 million years old, another one is 55 million years old. And you can imagine which one will be of high quality. Early we said depending on the depth of the place, the temperature of the place and the length of the period it will be different in quality. So this one is uh, 200 million years old and naturally that will be in high quality. Another one is only 55 million years. So we count now 2000 years and we are living in 2020 and we think it is such a long period. And here these coals have been buried under the earth for 200 million years. You can imagine. So, and that is the trees are all fell under the mud, under the earth due to natural pro, pro, process or programs or calamities. And after 200 million years we are taking them out in different form as coal. And you can imagine how long they have been under the pressure, under the high temperature under the earth. And now it has become fossil fuel. So, the 200 years old, million years old one is the place called Gundhavana. It is found in area Gundhavana. And another one is in the tertiary deposits. That is the third type of tertiary means the third class deposits which are only about 55 million years old. The major resources of Gundhavana coal which are metallurgical coal are located in so, the coal that we find in the Kondhavana area is metallurgical coal, that is the second highest grade metallurgical coal that is located in Damodar Valley, that is in West Bengal and Jharkhand, between West Bengal and Jharkhand. Then, Jharia, Ranigans, Bokaro are important coal fields. So, the important coal fields in the Kondhavana region are Jharia, Rani Ganj, Bakara, and so on. Then the Godavari, Mahanadi, Sun, and Varda valleys also contain coal deposits. Then in the in the valleys of these rivers, which are the rivers? The rivers, the Godavari, Mahanadi, Sun, and Varda. In the valleys of these four rivers also we find lot of coal deposits. The tertiary coal occur in northeastern states of Meghalaya, Assam, Rajya Pradesh, and Nagaland. So we said the second type of or the tertiary type of coal, which is only just 55 million years old, and that is found in these northeastern states like Assam, Meghalaya, Rajya Pradesh, Nagaland, and so on. These are the four states where we find the that uh, coal which is not that in high quality. Then remember coal is a bulky material which loses weight on use as it is reduced to ash. So coal is a bulky material, it is a very heavy thing and it is it loses weight on use as it is reduced to ash. So when we buy the coal it is very heavy thing. But after burning it, it becomes ash. Just like we are burning firewood. Firewood is heavy. After burning, we get little bit of ash. The weight is not safe, isn't it? The amount of firewood we put in the fire, and after burning it, the amount of ash that we get, are they of equal weight? Ash will be much more light, and it will be less. It is same thing with the coal. So coal is very heavy, but after burning it, it becomes ash and is losing the weight it will be very light and it provides fuel hence heavy industries and thermal power stations are located or near the coal fields so since this coal is very heavy for carrying the industries and the other thermal power stations which are using this coal for producing electricity or for producing something else. So all the factories and engines or 
industries that are using this coal what do, where do they situate they establish it near the coal field so that the transportation is easy otherwise it is such a heavy thing and they have to carry it so far away then the transportation becomes very expensive therefore the industries are very clever they set up the industry near the coal field so that they can easily collect the coal from the field it is very nearby so that is all the news about we have coal and next one is petroleum so the petroleum I am quite sure you are all very familiar with this source of energy, petroleum. So petroleum or mineral oil is the next major energy sources in India after coal. So we said coal is the first source of energy and the second important source of energy is petroleum products. So gas, everything will include in that. It provides fuel for heat and lightning, lighting lubricants for machinery and raw materials for number of manufacturing industries so this petroleum is used for what it is used for for heating so for cooking and so we need to heat up then for lighting so petroleum is also used for providing light like kerosene we use for lighting the lamp then it is also produced from it is also used for producing lubricants Lubricants means which is used for, the for uh, lubricating the engine parts and so on. You must have seen grease, engine oil and so on that is coming from petroleum. Then raw materials for a number of manufacturing industries and also it is a raw material for a number of industries. And petroleum refineries act as a nodal industry for synthetic textile, fertilizer, and numerous chemical industries so these petroleum refineries act as a nodal industry nodal means basic so it is a basic industry for so many other industries what are they like synthetic textile fertilizer and chemical industries all that is depending on this petroleum industry and most of the petroleum occurrences in india are associated with uh, alkalines and fall traps in the rock formation of the tertiary age. So, just as we saw in the case of coal, we can say the petroleum products also they are occurring in India and it is associated with anticlines and fall traps in the rock formations of the tertiary age. So, the anticlines and the traps we said earlier when we are talking about minerals. It is formed in between the rocks where there are cracks, where there are cuts and holes and so these minerals are formed in between these rocks. So it is of the tertiary age that we saw in the case of coal, the tertiary age which is uh, all only maybe some 55 million years old. So this petroleum products also is belonging to that tertiary age. Then it occurs where oil is trapped in the crest of the upfall. The oil bearing layer is a porous limestone or sandstone through which oil may flow. The oil is prevented from rising or sinking by intervening non porous layers. So some of the rocks are very porous. Porous means having a lot of holes like sand. If you collect and give sand and pour water inside, water will come out and go away. It will not remain in the sand. You know, because sand is porous, a lot of holes, gaps are there. So this oil also is formed where these porous rocks are there. A lot of holes are there. Therefore, the oil is flowing through the stone. But it cannot rise up because the top layer of the rock is not having holes. And it cannot go down because the down part also it is non-porous. So only where between the hard rocks there may be some porous layers like limestone and so which are not very hard and the oil is remaining between that. So it cannot go up, it cannot go down. So we have to drill and make hole in this rock, hard rock and reach this 
place or this area where it is porous. There we will find the oil deposits. Then petroleum is also found in fall traps between porous and non-porous rocks. Gas being lighter usually occurs above the oil. So this oil is also found in the fall traps that is in the crack of the fall means the crack or the split of the rock. So lot of uh, big big rocks may have small small cracks. So the oil deposit is also found in between these cracks. And the gas also may be there. The gas also is found along with petroleum. The gas is light and the oil is heavy therefore oil will be downside and the petroleum will be upside. So when we do the drilling to take it out petroleum products we are also able to collect the gas first. Gas is on top and it will come out first. Then about 63 percent about 63 percent of India's petroleum production is from Mumbai High. So the best oil field that we have is Mumbai High you can underline. So around 63 percentage of the India's petroleum production is coming from Mumbai High. So more than half 63 percentage of the total production in India is coming from the oil field in called Mumbai High. Then 18% from Gujarat and 16% from Assam. So other two states contributing the oil, the petroleum product is Gujarat and Assam. And Gujarat contributes 18% and Assam contributes 16%. From the map, locate the three major offshore fields of Western India. And and Galeso is the most important field of Gujarat. You can underline. In Gujarat, we said they are providing 18% of the total oil production. And the place, the most important place is called Angalesu. And Assam is the oldest oil producing state in India. So it is Assam that started producing oil first. Mumbai High and Gujarat and so came later. But Assam was the first one. And Dick Boy, Nakhar Khatia, and Mohran Rijan are the important oil fields in the state. You can underline. There are three important oil fields are there in Assam. Which are they? One is Dick Boy, another one is Nakhar Khatia, and the third one is Mohran Angrijan. These are the three places where oil is mined. Oil is mined out from from Assam. So that is about the oil. Then next one is natural gas. We have natural gas. We have natural gas. The natural gas is an important clean energy resource found in association with or without petroleum. So we already said when we are doing the mining of the petroleum, the gas remains on top and together with the petroleum we get the gas. And the one of the important, about, important thing about this gas is that it is very clean energy. That's why nowadays governments and the environmentalists they propose to use this as the source of energy for vehicles and so. So if the vehicles start using this natural gas, then the pollution will be much less. And it is used as a source of energy as well as an industrial raw material in the petrochemical industry. So this natural gas has got two usefulness. What are they? One is it is used as a source of energy to run the engine and so on. The second use is it is used as a raw material in the petrochemical industry. So where the chemicals are made, petrochemicals are made and this natural gas is used there as a source of raw material. The natural gas is considered an environmental friendly fuel because of low carbon dioxide emissions and is therefore the fuel for the present century. So as I said it is a clean energy, 
it is not polluting energy what is the reason why is it not polluting because this is containing very low amount of carbon dioxide so other fuels like diesel petrol and so it containing lot of carbon dioxide when we are using it in the vehicle then it is producing lot of carbon dioxide but this natural gas is containing very less carbon dioxide therefore if we use it in the vehicle it does not produce much carbon dioxide the environment remains clean and therefore this is a fuel for the present century now we know the atmosphere is not at all clean the atmosphere has become uh, high in carbon dioxide therefore this is the energy that is recommended by everyone for the present day use the large reserves of natural gas have been discovered in krishna godavari basin so in the basin between this rivers these two rivers krishna and godavari in that basin there is lot of gas deposits are there and along the west coast the reserves of the mumbai high and the allied fields are supplemented by finds in the gulf of kombe so apart from this krishna godavari basin we also have oil field or gas field in the mumbai mumbai high where this oil field also is there then also there are some other small fields are there which are supplemented or supported by finds in gulf of kombe the gulf of kombe there also got up uh, this little small small deposits are there then andaman and nicobar islands are also important areas having large reserves of natural gas so recently we have found out the place the islands andaman and nicobar there are also lot of deposits of this natural gas then 1700 km long hasira vijaypur and jagdishpur cross country gas pipeline links mumbai high and basin with fertilizer power and industrial complexes in western and northern india so there is a pipeline to carry this gas and what is the name of the pipeline it is hasira vijaypur and jagdishpur that is the name of this pipeline and it is 1700 km long and it is connecting from from where from mumbai high it is starting from mumbai high and it is going to the north india where there is fertilizer factories are there so they can use this natural gas for industrial purpose and in the fertilizer industry fertilizer factory and so on then this artery we call it artery you know what is artery the pipe or the vein that we use to carry blood to different parts of our country, of our body that is called artery for carrying blood here we call this pipeline as a artery because it is carrying the essential thing for our country the natural gas so it is a pipe we can call it a big vein going from mumbai to the northern part of india where there is industry and other factories are there therefore those factories are getting this essential fuel through this pipe that's why it is called artery and this artery has provided an impetus to india's gas production so because of this pipeline we can say the it is a plus point it is a push for production of natural gas then the power and the fertilizer industries are the key users of natural gas so what are the key users of the natural gas the power the power and the fertilizer industry so this gas is used for producing power or electricity and also it is used for for what purpose the fertilizer industry to work their machines and so on and use of compressed natural gas cng for vehicles to replace liquid fuel is gaining wide popularity in the country so as i said it is a clean fuel therefore the government recommends that every vehicle should be uh, replacing the petroleum products with natural gas so instead of using diesel and petrol they should start using this natural gas so that the environment will be clean and pure so that is the recommendation that people are making these days to start 
changing changing from petrol and diesel to natural gas then it will be uh, for us to live a healthy life environment will be clean because it contains very little amount of carbon and so on so we shall stop for today and we will continue again the different sources or different energies which are conventional so we shall study in the next class about electricity which is another conventional source of energy so thank you for listening meet you tomorrow bye